Welcome to the Soul Infused Monday show. It's still January 2019 and I'm super excited that you're here with me today. And if you're here live, leave a comment below. And I'm always curious to see where people are actually coming from, watching from, listening in from. So leave a comment below and tell me where you're watching from. And also if you're watching the replay to do the same thing because I always go back and check later so and also do me a favor L click the like button or the, sh the love button because facebook also shares more for the people that are interested and it shows that there is engagement and that there's interest and i know that you are loving this show as much as i'm loving doing it so click the like and share button or love button let me know that you're hearing me and who is here? Heather is here. Fantastic. I'm freezing Chicago. Okay, wonderful. So, Dolin. Hi, Dolin. So good to see you. So, let's get this show started. And if you ever set a New Year's resolution, or if you've been following me for a while, you know that I say, don't actually do New Year's resolutions, right? For several reasons, because usually they don't work. Did you know that, did you know that less than 25%, less than 25% of people that actually make New Year's resolutions stay committed longer than three weeks? Like, listen to this, less than 25 people, 25 people, <laughs> less than 25% stay committed longer than three weeks. So today is January 28th. So most people actually, listen to this, most people that set a, an intention or New Year's resolution on the 1st of January are already actually already gave up or are in the process of giving up or are kind of like falling backwards. Already. So I'm not as committed anymore. Less than 10%, I think the statistics, statistics is even less than 8%, but let's, put, let's pump it up. Less than 10% of people who set New Year's resolutions or make New Year's resolutions actually accomplish what they wanted to create in the first place. It's shocking. I mean, and it's not shocking for me, I know it, but tune in. So you are watching this, I don't know in which category you fall, but either you have given up already, you're kind of like doubting you're gonna make it or you're super committed and you say, you know, this year I'm gonna do something different and I actually gonna make this year the best year of my life. And if this is you, this is exactly the people that I want to call forward and I invite you to stay committed, to stay committed to whatever it is you want to create and to go back and remember why did I want to have this in the first place? So I'm curious, let me know, have you done a commitment or a New Year's resolution and where are you with it now? Melissa, hi Melissa. And Dolene is cold there, yes. <laughs> 48 degrees. Ooh. So today I'm gonna share one thing, uh, the one thing that if you really get to transform, to heal, to clear, that will set you free this year. And of course, there are many other things that are blocking you that we get to work on. However, over the last 15 years that I've been working with men and women from all over the world, this is coming up over and over and over again. And one thing that I know for sure is that I, I get so many women come to me that longing, they are longing for healing and transformation. And they want to feel good within themselves. They want to feel connected. They want to love themselves. They want to be authentically who they are. They want to express themselves in an authentic way, in a confident way. They want to feel loved, connected, joyful. They want to feel beautiful and they want to, oh, sometimes it doesn't even express in words, but they want to feel good about themselves. And if that is you, let me tell you that it's totally possible for you. And you get to create this this year because you matter, you are important and you can do it. So. The one thing, before I go in there, let me share something with you, a quick story. So I was walking on the beach um, just a few days ago, 
It was early morning after sunrise and I had just some old shorts on and a tank top, uh, no makeup and my hair was kind of up because it wasn't washed either. So I was walking on the beach happily by myself, feeling good about myself. There was no one because there are not many people living here on that stretch of the beach where I live. So if you don't know where I live, this is where I live. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chicago. I know it's freezing there, but maybe I send you a little bit warmth. And anyone else, it's in the cold. So I was walking here on the beach, happily by myself, and I'm single, so, and I'm interested in men, and I'm not actively looking for one, but I'm, you know, I'm open for a new relationship. And um, so I was walking there by myself, happily, and from further away, I see that there was a guy coming on a beach bike, those with those big tires, driving towards me. So it was, it was far away. I couldn't even see if he was 12 years old or 80 years old. I just saw a man coming, <laughs> right? And it was fascinating. I noticed an old programming coming up immediately. It was so fast that checked in. It's like, what am I wearing? How am I looking? What can I do to look better? Like, how is my hair? Um, what's my body doing like it was fascinating to me so i noticed it and because of the inner work that i've been doing for over 20 years and i still continue to do i was able to let go of that pretty quickly within seconds i shifted my energy and i got back to myself and i went back to the place of feeling good about myself in that moment and not being a victim of those voices and those programming and those beliefs and, and inner critic. And, and yet it always fascinates me that no matter how much work you've done, how much inner work you've done, you still get to deal with that. However, the difference on how you deal with it makes, makes, makes a difference. Like that that's really makes a difference. And I was thinking about that when I was tuning in about the whole topic of what's holding us back. What's the one thing that keeps us stuck? And when it comes to loving yourself, to fully being in acceptance with who you are, to feel that you're worthy, that you matter, that what you do is important, and that you simply feel free to be who you are. So I was tuning in and when I was walking and thinking, okay, what is one of the things that if you get to transform it this year will make a big, big difference and set you ultimately free. And one of the things is really that inner critical voice. I call it the inner critic, the judgment. And so when I was walking on the beach, and it was so fascinating because I just passed by the venue where I'm going to do this beautiful retreat in April. I'm going to do a three-day retreat, a uh, soul power retreat, where I'm calling forward those women who are committed to really feel that vibrancy, to feel confident, to step into their soul power. And when I was tuning in, and I was also tuning in, that's one of the things that I'm going to do there is really help to detach from that inner critic because it's one of the most limiting and blocking things in our system. So how do you do that actually? And let me tell you, does that resonate with you? Does that story resonate with you? Please do. Heather, for, uh, please do what? I don't remember. <laughs> resonate. Okay, good. Hi, Melissa. Resonates. Good. I think, to be honest, Every woman can resonate with this in some way or another, you know? And it's really about us letting go of that inner critical voice because that gets us into a programming of wanting to please, of wanting to be perfect, to be loved. It triggers a lot of fears and a lot of beliefs and it feeds on it. So the one thing the one thing that will set you free this year, if you commit to it and to work through it, is to uh, detach. I wouldn't say let go because it's going to still be there. I just, you know, it's still there when I was walking on the beach. It just didn't grab me anymore for longer than a few seconds. 
to let go and detach from your own inner criticism, especially on an energetical level. Because from a logical level, you understand this already. You understand that judging yourself is not serving you. It's not helping you. Doesn't make you feel good. Would you agree with me? Would you agree with me? Do you know that judging yourself is not serving you? And yet still it's happening over and over again. However, the first thing you got to do is to decide that you want to change that and to work with it, to really transform it, to heal it. And just because other people, you know, people are asking me about my retreat, if you're interested in working through that, that inner criticism from an energetical level to set yourself free so that you can connect to your soul and that you are not a victim of it anymore, leave the common retreat below and I'm happy to share more about it. And it doesn't matter if you believe it's for you or not, we just find out, is it a good fit or not? I have three spots left. And if you are a woman that is committed to make this year your best year and to fully love and trust yourself and to let the soul come in, if this is you, come to my retreat. Leave a comment below with the word retreat and I will reach out to you and share more. Totally no strings attached. So how do you detach from your inner critic? So number one, you understand, you realize, and you recognize that you are not the inner critic. It's a voice because we are identified with it. We are identified with it. When we say, I am fat, I am ugly, I'm stupid, I'm not good enough. It's like we are so identified with it that we believe it's true. So the first thing you want to do is to recognize that it's not who you are. It's a voice. It's a programming that's running in the background for so long. It's an autopilot. And most of it even happens unconsciously. So number one, the inner critic, the voice, the self-judgment is not you. So therefore, there's something else in you. You are, your real true self is not the inner critic. Am I landing here? Does this make sense, guys? Let me know. So that I know that I'm really here, that I'm making a difference for you. Ah, and Carrie is here. Okay. Oh, yes. Specific beach story. The critic shows up often. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, judge not working. Okay, good. So I just want to really make sure this is landing here for you. So first you want to recognize that it's not you and then you get to detach from it also energetically because mentally you understand this too understanding it alone won't do the difference and what's often missing because a lot of women come to me who've done a lot of work a lot of work before and there's still something missing and they still struggle from that from that inner criticism and what's missing for them is really an energetical detachment and then also being able to let the soul come in and live from a soul-infused state of being that becomes the operational system or the operation system, the system, whatever, like a computer. Depending on which program is the primary program that will run the system. So what's missing is to really connect to who you really are, to your soul being, and let that come in, and let that be the system that drives your life. And here's the difference, just using my own story. In the past, when I didn't have that system, I would, first of all, I wouldn't have gone out in shorts in a tank top without makeup and without having washed my hair. I wouldn't have even dared to get out of the house, number one. Number two, I wasn't, would have never lived by the beach because I was terrified to be anywhere in a bikini. So like that, that to begin with, but let's say I was there, I would have judged myself so badly. I most likely would have gone further away so that no one sees. I would have just felt bad and ashamed and would have dreaded that moment that someone comes and see me. Okay, and that might be, that might be 
an extreme example, but that's over 20 years ago. I mean, I was like extremely unhappy with myself. And I had no connect, I had no tools to detach. I didn't know who I was really, and I couldn't call my soul in and live from a different state of being. So that's when you don't live that way. So imagine waking up in the morning every single day, fired up, being able to connect, and you know how to connect, and you know who you are, and you feel good about yourself, and it doesn't mean your life is perfect because things happen, but you can deal with them. You live in a higher vibration. Just take a breath, just tune in, imagine, close your eyes even, close your eyes for a moment, drop into your heart. Take a breath and relax and imagine yourself free. Imagine yourself expanded. Imagine yourself feeling good about yourself, loving yourself, trusting yourself. And when that inner critic, this inner voice comes up, you recognize it, you see it. However, you can deal with it and you expand and you go above it. It's not consuming you, not anymore. It's not grabbing you anymore. You are free to expand press and to live who you really are. Just tune in and imagine your soul, your soul infused. And take another breath. And if this resonates with you, if this, if you are a woman that wants that, if this is you, again, I invite you to explore and to take this further and deeper this year and to join my soul, infused soul power retreat here in the Dominican Republic. It's going to be incredible. Three full days, healing and transformation on the beach. And one of the things we're going to do is that energetical, energetical process that when in group, in person, is so powerful. I get goosebumps right now. I already feel like if this is you, just leave the comment retreat below and I will connect with you to see if this is a right fit. I have three spots left. And I know that if this resonates with you, it's because I'm calling you forward. I'm calling you forward to really create this for your life and yourself this year and make a huge difference. So take another nice deep breath, let that energy in. And even if the, re the, the retreat doesn't resonate with you, this is super powerful. Take a breath. Visualize. Remind yourself of what you truly desire. And when you detach from your inner critic, and I want to share one more piece about this because it's important to understand. It's not about judging the inner critic. It's not about getting rid of it. It's not about fighting it. I've done all of it. It doesn't help. It doesn't work. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your energy. It's about shifting your energy and understanding that this program is actually running you to protect you. It was created very early on in your life when you were a vulnerable child, when you didn't feel safe when, you know, you were just really like a naked little child. And even though it's a flawed logic and it goes against, it doesn't serve you anymore. Originally, it was created to protect yourself. So instead of judging it, instead of fighting it, instead of trying to get rid of it, Start to look at it, start to use it, start to do the work that will set you free. And even acknowledge the fact that even though it's so painful, to a certain extent it did protect you, but it's not serving you anymore. Okay. Do you have any questions? I'm going to be here one or two more minutes. It's like, it makes so much sense. Okay, fantastic. So if this makes sense, click the like or love button right now. So I know that this is landing, that I'm making a difference for you, that this is valuable for you. That's the most important piece here for me. 
And then tune in one last time. If you have following me for a while or you resonate with me and you want to take it further and you want to let go of that inner criticism, you want to love and accept it, you want to really express yourself as the authentic soul being that you are and you want to be in an intimate, very small group of women creating magic this year together. Leave the word retreat and I will get back to you and share more details. And let's just find out if that's your best, your best step or not. And I can promise you one thing. If this is not your best step, I will give you clarity. I will help you get clear what is your next best step. <sighs> well, thank you for being here. It's always such a pleasure to share this time with you. And when you tune in every Monday, you are giving yourself the gift of tuning into a higher vibration and to set the tone for the rest of the day, set the tone for the rest of the week, and you can set the tone for the rest of your life. I love you, appreciate you. If this resonates with you and you want to know more about the retreat, leave a comment below and I will connect with you. Much love.